So I'm not the biggest Black Friday shopper anymore, but this one deal, I just couldn't pass up. This is the 2020 M1 MacBook Air, and I was able to pick this up for only $799. Now you might be saying to yourself, dude, it's a 2020 machine that has the older processor and design language, not exactly the best choice. And look, I'm not gonna try and argue that this is better than the newest MacBook Air, but that computer has a starting price tag of $1,200. And if you put it that way, I'm not sure if the inherent improvements that the newest model has is actually worth it when I was able to get this older model at such a good price. So today I wanna talk about why going with the 2020 M1 MacBook MacBook Air is still an excellent investment going into 2023, and why it might be even a better choice than going with the newest one. Okay, first, let's talk about design and form factor, a major component to the MacBook Air and a primary reason why it's been a fan favorite for so long. So yes, this does have the quote-unquote older MacBook Air design, and I say it that way because the current form factor was just introduced earlier this year, so this isn't ancient by any means. And look, the good news is from a design perspective, it's still a very good, true to MacBook Air design. It still maintains an ultra-thin, ultra-lightweight body that allows it to be one of the most compact and portable laptops you can have in the market today. It still has a super premium unibody aluminum build that lives up to Apple's very high standards of quality. I mean, seriously, look how thin this body is. It's a marvel that an entire computer is in this slim package, especially one as capable as this one. It looks particularly nice in the space gray colorway that I went with, and this is still no doubt one of the most beautiful looking machines you can buy today. Open it up and you're greeted with a 13.3 inch retina display. It comes in at a resolution of 2560 by 1600 and it's a beautiful panel. Content comes off rich and sharp with saturated vibrant colors and it's a significant improvement from the old 720p displays Apple used in the MacBook Air for what seemed like an eternity. Now yes, the new 2022 M2 MacBook Air does come with a marginally nicer liquid retina display. However, the 2020 model doesn't have the useless notch which I feel makes for a cleaner overall look. When it comes to the keyboard, this model is equipped with the Apple Magic Keyboard, which now has a proven track record of success. If you all remember, Apple experimented with some other types of keys that were problematic. You're not going to run into that here with the 2020 MacBook Air. The typing experience is fantastic as you get a decent amount of travel and feedback. It's fully backlit and you get all the important shortcut keys. It's a great balance of functionality and aesthetic design. Pair that with the massive trackpad that seamlessly blends into the MacBook's frame and you really do have everything that you need in order to be hyper productive right at your fingertips. And at the end of the day, this is still one of the best laptops that you can get and still a MacBook Air through and through. You can take it with you anywhere with ease, all while trusting it's built like a tank and will last you a very long time. And real quick, I hope this video was helpful. Pressing the like button would be super helpful for me. A sub to the channel would be even better, especially if you're new here. Now design and portability is great and all, but the one major flaw that the MacBook Air has had for a very long time is performance. I mean, it was capable enough to get you through the more simple tasks like browsing the web and basic document creation, hence why it's so popular among students, but it was never meant to be used for any serious heavy lifting. Well, with the introduction of of Apple's M1 chip, Apple not only solved this lack of performance issue, it made the MacBook Air arguably the most powerful laptop in its segment and by a considerable margin. And I don't want to put this lightly, the leap that this computer was able to make with Apple's in-house processor is so significant it fundamentally changed what the MacBook Air is. With M1, I can now comfortably use this computer to do some serious creating, mainly in the form of editing high resolution video. Editing 4K footage on Final Cut Pro was something I couldn't even dream of before on the MacBook Air, but it's able to handle a pretty heavy timeline with most graphics like a walk in the park. It's also able to manage this workload silently as there's no fans on this computer. It's no surprise why the 2020 MacBook Air has been compared more often to the MacBook Pro lineup. The performance on this guy is so next level, it really can't be looked at as a quasi ultrabook ever again. And when you add in the other Pro-like features like the integrated Touch ID security system and the inclusion of Thunderbolt USB 4 ports, which can support up to a 6K external display or up to 40 gigabytes per second data transfer, it becomes clear to see that this computer is a completely different animal from what it was. And we haven't even gotten into one of the most impressive and important areas of performance with this guy and that's its battery life. Now you would think with such a major performance boost it would be fair to assume that it would come at the cost of the MacBook Air's class leading screen on time. But no not even in the slightest the 2020 MacBook Air with all its M1 glory can still give you around 18 hours of use on a full charge. It's honestly kind of mind-boggling how a computer this compact and this powerful can give you such generous battery life but it allows the MacBook Air to still be one of the most convenient user-friendly devices and one of the most mobile. And I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about one more underrated but super noticeable area of performance with this guy and that's its sound quality. The M1 MacBook Air has dual speakers that get incredibly loud and make for an outstanding listening experience. It's again kind of deceiving because you don't expect this level of sound output from a laptop this size but it kind of is the cherry on top of the overall strong performance Sunday that this computer is bringing to the table. 
And look, even though the M2 MacBook Air is going to be objectively better when looking at a spec sheet, that computer has been experiencing some performance issues that have been pretty well documented at this point, so it's definitely something you want to keep in mind. Number one, the internal SSDs on the base model seem to struggle when it comes to data transfer speeds to the point where many people have done tests where the M1 outperforms the M2. Moreover, the redesigned thinner base of the M2 MacBook Air may be the reason why a lot of folks have been reporting thermal issues. A hotter computer will lead to more throttling, and again, there are a lot of folks seeing mixed to lower performance when compared to the original M1. Now, I'm hoping that these issues get sorted out, but what's comforting to know is that this 2020 model has had enough time in people's hands to conclude that it's a proven success. If there were any major issues with this guy, they probably would have come out by now, so it's a much more reliable device to go with, at least for the here and now. Now, that doesn't mean that the 2020 M1 MacBook Air is perfect. There are definitely some components of it that I'm not a fan of. The first would be the lack of ports, as it only comes with two USB Type-C ports. I love that they're Thunderbolt, but having two is pretty limiting, especially if you need to charge your MacBook Air, as this model charges using one of the two ports. The other thing about this computer that just clearly sucks is the webcam. You're seeing it here in all its 720p glory, and look, there's no way to sugarcoat it. The quality here is just bad, especially when you compare it to how well this computer performs everywhere else. But all things considered, those are some pretty minor flaws to what otherwise really is an exceptional laptop, especially when it only cost me $799. I can't stress enough how good of a value this is with all you're getting with this MacBook and the proven track record that it has, and it kind of makes the other options look kind of silly. I mean, think about it. The M2 MacBook Air starts at $1199, and I seriously don't think you're going to get much better performance out of that computer, especially with some of the issues that it's been facing. I even think that the M1 MacBook Air is better value over the 2022 13-inch M2 MacBook Pro, which starts at $1299. Again, the performance gain that you get on that device, to me, can't rival what you're getting here for $799. Now, I'm not sure how long this price is going to last. I'll leave links in the description so you can get the most up-to-date pricing based on when you're watching this video, but I'm personally glad I jumped on this one I did. This computer is not for me. It's actually for my wife who I'm going to be teaching to do some video editing and I couldn't have asked for a more perfect computer to help her get started with that. But hey, that's just me and I want to know what you guys think. Do you think that the M1 MacBook Air at that price is a no-brainer? Or is there a better option to go with? Curious to get your thoughts, let me know what you guys are thinking in the comments down below. And in case you're interested in learning about some of Apple's other more older yet proven devices, check out these one year later reviews of the iPhone 13 and the 13 Pro Max. They're some of the best iPhones ever made.